And I've been, uh, you remember that metaphor of bridging? And we have been now on the side of, most of the side of soul, but still related to how to create reality, also in professional and organizational world. Uh, now we go to our helicopter <coughs> and go on the other side. The context for professionality is, that, uh, um, is quite a meta level, but I think it's important for trainers <coughs> and for the forming of associations. I gave that the first priority to go through. It might be that, that there are four small <coughs> models for personality. We might not come to this during these three days because we have discussed much more than in the last seminar. If this is the case, then we will put this part from the last seminar on the DVD as well, so that you can, just can watch it. Don't have to miss it. So, fear of loss, as Richard Erskine said to me in 79, is one of the starting points for many games. So it's okay to positively take care of fear of loss. Are you ready, ready to, to step back and um, find a perspective of a gardener in the profession, professionalizing garden of GA and about thinking about structures, how this garden could be, how we understand professionalities and, and things like this. This is really a, the other edge of it. And I firmly believe also this is in one way more dry it's not less cultural building. So we need to develop, if we want, really want to be professionals, uh, to tolerate uh, administration, culture building, structure building work, because structure uh, gives a frame of reference to individual professionalism, mm -hmm. and this gives a frame of reference to personal satisfaction and life development. And sometimes in association we have the problem that we build up quite a complicated, boring structures. And then these structures are administrated by people who don't know what to else in their life. And they get, become very controlling and very administrative. And so the polarization between co-creative life in organization and uh, stabilizing an organization uh, is built up. And that's a danger. So it's always a question of balance to make an organization as structural as it needs to be at a minimum and leave many, many, many spaces for creative encounters. And so that the people who are creative will stay involved and not say, okay, they, do the, they are running the association and we do the essential work. And then uh, it's drifting away from each other. <coughs> and, this, and this is not something that you, you are emotionally uh, drawn into it. It's something you must understand how culture is meaningful and certainly find ways to fill organizational roles, for example, in associations, but also design organizational roles and structures in a way that there is enough space for living a meaningful life within these roles. So that's a overall statement. Now I just start on the level on a level of 
how can we just define things. That's an abstract but important notion to me. It's, I, I took it from a cultural scientist named George Steiner. Originally, I guess he was a journalist or, or, or a literature professor. And he made a significant difference between two ways of defining. So defining means I want to know what's it about. And he says, in science, defining means drawing lines that are borders between the one thing and the other thing. And the one thing cannot be the other thing at the same time. So if you try with this concept um, of sharp contoured definitions, in the word definition means um, drawing borders. Fine. Yeah? Uh, if you, for example, have the discussion, what is training, what is consulting, what is therapy, what is organizational development? Then you want to divide a field into parts, and each area, each claim in the field cannot be at the same time a claim of the other field. So you have endless discussions about, is it still consulting, is it already psychotherapy, or vice versa. And in the German TA association, we spent years and always discussing the differences between psychotherapy and counseling. And some people have been very much convinced that only psychotherapists are uh, entitled to deal with regression. And um, educational people should not because they, they do not know how to relate to the deep work that could be elicited by regression. But what is regression? If you ask somebody, how did you, uh, uh, how did you feel as a child when you thought about what you will be one day? Isn't, isn't that a regression? It's inviting an old age, older age perspective. Or if you put somebody into a guided imagery mood, is, isn't that regression? So it doesn't make a sense to say uh, if we have defined it as the one, it could not be the other, because the, the f consequences of this kind of thinking is fighting uh, around areas that are yours. And, and in many organizations, this tradition of thinking leads to that people are always busy with uh, defending their claims instead of uh, culturing their claims. For example, when I worked in Russia for many years, uh, I had a cooperation with some people from Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz. Ah, Mercedes-Benz. Yes, yes mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. worked a lot for. And after some weeks of cooperation on set, a person called, how could you intrude our claim? We are the department for international blah, blah, blah. You never heard from this department doing anything. Instead, but defending <laughs> their claim. And that's it. And this is not only a question of uh, motivation or so, it's also a question of thinking. As long as if you think, you only know who you are when you have the borders of your claim clear, then it's a notion of identification that uh, has consequences like this. So it's also a problem of thinking, a frame of references for identifying uh, reality parts. So George Steiner says this is a sharp contour definitions, and there might be scientific, specific scientific uh, approaches to reality for what this way of defining is appropriate. But whenever you go into cultural understanding of reality, it's not possible to work with this, this meta model. You have always overlapping uh, core understanding of what it is about. 
And if you want to understand, for example, what is psychotherapy, you do not define it by, am I allowed to work with transference or not? Or with, uh, but you know what is the main issue a psychotherapy has to cover? What are the main goals he usually is heading for? What are the typical procedures? And if you have a, a self-definition, professional, professional self-definition on that, then you can certainly work as, uh, at out, outer areas of your field. Also, you then work with ideas, with approaches that are also ideas and approaches of other professionals. The difference is <coughs> that if you have to think about priorities, you always know where to go back. So if, you, if we invite somebody uh, to tell us about his uh, uh, identity, let's say as an organizational consultant, we ask him to give us typical examples of the way he does. And we found out whether he's really used in typical thinking with models of his choice. We do not say which model are the right one. But we have an idea what he is always, uh, should always be focused on when, when he wants, when he acts from the professional role uh, as an organizational consultant. And we are not interested in silly discussions like whether he is allowed to work with regressive, with, with elements of reality we would call regression. And certainly uh, this, this is a heuristic thing. It never can really, uh, cultural terms never can really be defined in the former way, the scientific way. They only can be described in a way that your soul understands it. It's understanding, it's not being able to, to explain, explain. And understanding is the way culture is built up and forwarded. Does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. And um, this has also to do uh, not only in personal development of uh, identification, who am I, but also in identification uh, of professions or associations or organizations. Um, if you want to know who you are, you should not, let's say it in a metaphor, if you have a flowers and strauss a bouquet of flowers mm -hmm. you should not claim for having flowers that nobody else has in order to be unique what many people do they pick something and make a sign of uh, a brand sign on it uh, it's a different way to say uh, how i'm unique because i have a, my specific bouquet of flowers others have as well. So many discussions and many claims for originality uh, are not any, not, not, not more important to know who you are. <coughs> and this is also confronting a very common way how people want to, to, to build up a brand. We have now something that is totally new, nobody else had it, and it's better than, and when you Say, okay, tell me what it is. Say, oh, the TA people has this, psychotherapists have it. Everybody somehow has it. Uh, you are not unique also to have it. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you are unique, how you build that into a bouquet in, your, in the bundle of your roles, your stages, your understandings of reality. And this is then an identity. And this is an identity. Uh, you will get attention for uh, from qualified partners even more. 
because the idea I have something nobody else has, there's a very shallow and not from the marketing perspective with on a qualified market, it's not a successful approach to do it. What we also have talked about in the beginning, I repeat that now, we also uh, think, and, and Bern has written that in the, in the 1949 article, huh? so these are examples, models of, for in, illustrating intuitions. So we also always know even models and methods are very plausible, uh, they are a kind of questioning reality. And if you look at them not as truths, but as tools, then a lot of following questions come from that. This is, what can the tool do? Can this tool be used in a flexible and still specific <coughs> way? So, not systems, complicated diagrams. Uh, can, it, can it be changed easily? If you have a tool that is saying functional model has to be tied to structural model and this, uh, so defining proper function has to go over structural model to understand childhood events. Then it's not flexible. And you, you cannot specify this model if you do not need any childhood stuff. So, these are all, all, all our meta perspectives on tools. And today, uh, because we have too many approaches, I think one criterion <laughs> for a good approach is if it can be easily combined with others. <laughs> and you can use the tool for all levels of reality. For example, you can use it for the person, for the inner process of a person. You can use the same tool. A tool means set of questions. Mm -hmm. For the relationship perspective of the person, you can use it for the professional understanding of that person and for the organizational. And you do not uh, need to change tools while you are relating these levels to each other. It's non-economical, and that's the same with procedures. They should be just simple. That is, for example, why I gave up the work with psychodrama. Psychodrama is wonderful, but it invites a multitude of transparent phenomena, and it took, takes one and a half and two hours to work on a focus with it, that complicated play, and even if you do that success, successful, you have 30, 40, 50 percent of issues activated you cannot deal with. And this is why, this is why I do not work with uh, uh, psychodrama any longer, also in specific, <coughs> for specific purpose, purposes, this might be wonderful. So, I'm all, I'm all, always, am also an economist because we have too little resources to, serve the, to, to save the world. So we need to, 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 to be economical uh, on these tools and resources. And one criterion is, can your tool you choose be easily uh, used on several levels and can it easily be combined with others? And so parts you do not need, can they easily be put it into the background? Do you have the same thinking with regard to um, constellations and how yes, it gets Yes, the same. So you the have same. the same thinking, yeah. The same. Yeah. So I, I know... It's useful occasionally, but as a general term. Right. Too much. It's a... Uh, I, I, I know that personally since 35 years or so. Um, it's a wonderful set up to understand if, to understand intuitive collective mean building meaning building but it's a creation 
and I've done, I've seen Hellinger do wonderful work on a meaning level, while the content level was totally wrong. Say that again, sorry. The content level yes. was totally wrong. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't but on a meaning level, ah, okay. he had wonderful ideas to rearrange like a serial, like a serial story. Uh, Hellinger's problem is that he believes in the plausibility because it's meaningful, he thinks also it's true. And this is, uh, and uh, he's not a thinker. But who, who are you talking about? He who? Bert Hellinger. Bert Hellinger. Hellinger. Ah, constellations. Constellations. Ah, constellations. Ah. Uh, you're, okay, I thought you yeah, everybody knows him. No. <laughs> yeah, he's an ex-priest and mm -hmm. he's still kind of, is a kind of priest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he failed a CM uh, exam in Denmark in the 80s. Yeah. He wanted to be a transactional analyst. And he's American, English, what? German. German. Ah, okay. You said because it was, he thinks, his, He's, because it's meaningful, he thinks it's true. Yes. Ah, okay. He's a judge. He's, he, he's a judge. He yeah. can, he's, he's very sen sensitive to what is meaningful. <coughs> but he doesn't, he doesn't uh, mind if on the content level, what he puts together to create meaning yeah. on, a, on a real logical level doesn't fit together. So it's only oriented to meaning. So he's an artist. That's as an art artist. That's okay. The problem is only that he says that's how the world is. I understand, Ben, from one of your students. I don't know if this is true. Yes. That um, one of the tools that you developed in the systemic training yes. is some um, sets of questions of systemic questioning. Yes. Yeah. Right. And this is like a, a tool, I guess, which yes. can be used on these different levels. Yes. Um, yeah, certainly. For me, tools are always concepts to generate questions. And are these in English? Do you have an English version of these questions? Systemic questions? No. We have, uh, we have so, some catalogs. <laughs> we have some catalogs in, in German. In this case, then, when, when you talk about content, uh, you in this situation you are meaning the content uh, the people bring? I give you an example. I did a constellation myself, okay. um, Helling a led it, and my wife and me, we, we have been involved, and finally we ended up in my wife and me being opposite to my father and her mother. And somehow, this was a whole. It, it functioned. But from real history, my father and her mother do not have anything to do with it. It was like a dream uh, of qualities. But he believed that it is also a historical thing of us both, that we live in the year now. And I think this was just creation, poetic creation. So on a content level. And this, not, this would not be a problem if he would not mix up it. And he tells his pupils, this is how it is, and they believe it, and they tell us, this is how it is, that's how the world works. I have the idea that he used all these like an insight, not like that and now I understand why some people are using constellation in such a Way yes. In yes. But I, I think, like anything else, it's evolved. Yes. Alex, you will have a sense of this. Um, some people don't do that. Yeah. They yeah. use it for meaning. Well, certainly, certainly. It's in all schools. Yes. That there are school. yeah. People are to, just doing it schematically, and there are people who understand the spirit and use it, flex it. Yeah. And what I'm saying here is to give you some. Uh, uh, thinking tools to understand why they should be flexible and how. And this is a great problem for us in TA. Some yes. people use it very schematically and yeah. formulaic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And believe. Being trapped in reifications. Mm -hmm. For example, what, one of the examples is they have a long discussion about the semi-permeable membrane between ego states. 
See me permeable membrane between ego states. Yeah. Ego state is a logical category. There is no, there is no membrane. It is no ego state. We must remember. Yeah, it's a logical category on how to look. But Byrne used the biological meta metaphor, and the metaphor uh, in developed its own reality, yeah. and people just took it for real. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's just not very intelligent. I'm sorry, <laughs> I would have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> just not. Yeah. So, I go back to this list. Uh, also, question: what, A good tool is a, a, a tool that can be easily introduced. Mm. And, for example, the theatre metaphor. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good tool because it doesn't cost a lot of resources to introduce it. Mm. And it's easy to back off from if it stops working. It's easy to come out again right. from it. Right. Then you, you, okay, let's go you let go it and, yeah. and adopt another one. Yeah. You never you never yeah. get caught yeah. looking to the world through a model. Yeah. Then the question which resources are necessary around to use a tool? When we work with companies, uh, we certainly can build up big organizational development processes, but then we always need ten specialists to keep that running. Mm. We introduce uh, procedures to companies that they can adopt themselves and use, like colloquial supervision and things like that. And sometimes people are not aware that they are producing a lot of complicated tools that it will be a need for them afterwards, always to maintain working with that tool. And I, do, I don't think that's very much ethical. It's, a, it's an exploitative act, an unconscious. Yeah? Because a company is not here for being a playing ground for my ideas. You mean um, a tool that they have to constantly depend on? Yes. Yeah. For, uh, for example, when you work with constellations. Right. It's so difficult to work with constellations, you always need a special, a well-trained specialist. Mm. If you if you work with learning conversations, with simple <coughs> questions, everybody under it ties into a competence of everybody, can take over this form because it's not complicated and can spread it. Yeah. And we have just last year brought our book about uh, colloquial counseling mm -hmm. and how to un introduce colloquial learning conversations to companies and organizations. And on the one hand, what, what to be aware of, what it needs, that it works. It seems to be natural to everybody, but still there are many points you really should take care of, otherwise <laughs> it won't work or it only won't work for those who do not need it. Yes. But it must work for everybody and what you have to mm -hmm. keep in mind for that and how the strategy to convince, uh, to introduce it into an organization and how long they have to be in there and then slowly get out so they can do it on their own and which roles and so. Mm. Uh, it's, a, it's a good, it's a well uh, sold book, small one. Mm. So, the more we go on, the smaller our books become. Yes. So people, <laughs> it's, easier, it's easier for people. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a tool. It's a tool as well, right? <laughs> right. Okay. That's in, so that book, again, you've written that in German, presumably. That's just a bit of, you say it is a book? That you yeah, it's a small book. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure whether we have a translation of that. I have to look on my list of, okay. of what I have already ordered to translate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's very interesting. again, if you're no publisher, yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> we would be happy to bring that out. Um, and an important question is not to produce too many transference problems yourself. The tool should be easily to be integrated into everyday life. Mm. 
And if it doesn't require specialists or special stages or special scripts or plays for too long, it's a burden mm. to the organization who has a different business. Mm. And it's, it costs a lot of money. Yes. You know, so it's a better investment yeah. in what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I've enlarged the perspectives on TA concepts uh, with two perspectives. Classical, we have, we say TA is a personality theory. I say we can look at reality from the perspective of personality and using TA models to describe uh, uh, reality, Pers uh, the perspective of TA, uh, of personality in reality. So it's, it's a choice of viewpoint, it's not an attribute of the thing. So do you mean by that um, structural ego state analysis? For example, yes. Yeah. Or you would also think about roles analysis? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is the perspective. You could look at the same, <coughs> at the same event, you say, okay, uh, if there is a conflict between two board members, we can say, uh, how, is it a conflict between, um, how is the conflict to be designed from the perspective of the both personalities? And how should we work with these both personalities that they can um, change their view and their reaction to that conflict? This would be working with this conflict from the perspective of personality, what very often is done in coaching. But you also can work on the same conflict from the perspective of relationships. How is the one inviting the other in what kind of roles, what kind of reactions? How does this person react and how then this is interpreted by the other one and how together they build up a loop of a specific escalation pattern, for example. And you can describe this without picking up the notion of personality. It's looking at the same reality, but from the perspective, how is the same reality uh, described as communication? So you would be thinking of things like game theory? Yes, this is game theory, transactions, things like that. And you can look at the same perspective in terms of uh, frame of references and creating reality. What is the frame of reference, the two frame of reference which are meeting in this conflict? And do I have any idea how I should change the frame of references so that they have a chance to come easily up to a shared reality. Then I do not look at the transactions which build up this vicious circle or the personalities which are involved in the set, but just in the logics of reality that meet at that point. And other questions and other kind of inventions coming from that. And sometimes it might be interesting to understand the situation in the light of past or in the light of possible future. So I look at the same conflict, uh, for example, because I think um, they have, there have been something in the past where the fears of each of us was triggered and they managed to go along with each other very well, but now there's a new crisis and these old fears come back. Then I look at it from a developmental perspective. Or the actual conflict uh, makes sense in light of the future development of the company. The so one thinks of selling the company, the other thinks of going to stock with the company. So, uh, and, but <coughs> it, it take, it's a specific perspective to be invited 
if you really want to understand it in the context of development. If you actually do not want to address the context of development, but just uh, address the meeting of two realities, you do not need to have the developmental aspect in your language, in your focus. So this is what I meant with the lights. You should be able to switch off lights you do not need right now, because you do not want to work with it in the light of. And when you think about that in TA concepts, which concepts are you using from that? The frame of reference. These are mostly so the, the, the shift concepts, or maybe in the group, the group Mago concept Mago, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and yes, that's the reality of constructive part. The so developmental is more script and, okay. and um, developmental theory. I also thought cultural parent fits in there quite well too. You know, Pearl Drago's cultural parent. Yes. In terms of looking at the past. You know, yes, yeah. We, yeah. The, if the parent is, per definition, is tied to the past, parent, I don't know. It depends on whether you use a kind of structural or functional yeah. model. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I because she uses that et etiquette, technical character. Mm -hmm. um, I often think with that model of hers, mm -hmm. it's the closest an organisational. Yeah, that we get to a kind of structural analysis mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. unpacking okay. or understanding some of the the script and leadership mm -hmm. issues that have happened up okay. until this point. Um, this might be, I, I do not know. The series burns. Oh, of course it's here. Yeah. 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 And, and he was really clear in his book on structure and dynamics. He says something about don't mix this up with models of individual psychology and the ego states. No. And he was really clear about that. I mean, I agree with but you. But it got lost. It got lost uh, in really the development of ITA. So we, if we look at this from this viewpoint, we are into developmental aspects of, devel uh, yeah. of actual situation of TA. Well, what I want to just check with you as you yes? go through these. Many psychotherapists who go and work in organizations call in because there's a conflict. Yes. Will say, okay, this is what I do. Structure yes, they analysis. do it habitually because that's what they have learned and but that's not how. Not in a systemic frame. Like yes. These two personalities are yes. in this system. Yes. Because in some way, yes. there is a fit, a match between these two personalities, the totally. ego state model, yeah. and the system. And yeah. this needs to be part of the. Analysis. The yeah. same with number two and number three. I think many psychotherapists working in organizations yeah. that are TA would say, yeah, that's what we do. So there's a piece to be added to this right. about always thinking there is a match or not yeah. to the system. Right. And the function it has within the system. Yes. Within the As system well. itself. That's yes. what makes the difference. Yes. And certainly it's uh, looking at all these things from a meta viewpoint. Uh, if information is the difference that makes a difference, then certainly if two cultures meet to help each other to be inspired and developed, they must be different on the part of further development. Mm. And at the same time, have a common frame of reference from which they want to deal with these differences. And uh, the fifth point is perspective of professional and organizational culture. So if I look at the same conflict we had up to now, I say, how is this a conflict between two role uh, inhabitants, no, role, role takers, with roles from different organizational cultures? This is not, uh, and, and then I understand that there's the one culture and the other culture, and if... Sorry, what is it? Uh, this is uh, off the, the... No, we need it for the camera, okay. the light. Okay. Do you want to exchange with Gita, there is no light? Do you want to exchange it? Getting in the spotlight, Nick. <laughs> 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 this is why we have the bulb, which doesn't work. 
And as you may understand, this this is not the one part or the other part of reality. It's always one reality. It's the one or, or other access to reality. Uh, that, and that makes differences that make a difference. Yeah. And this is why I, I think uh, a professional, especially a teacher, it, um, a, a practitioner should have that as well. But especially if somebody is a teacher, should have a solid meta perspective to understand uh, what he or she is teaching. So that people do not identify habitually with the one or other professional understanding of reality and thinking this is the truth now. We call that meta-professionality. And again, we have developed some didactic models to help us to uh, activate the proper questions for learning uh, to, to handle this meta standpoint. One was, this is 1990, so it's more than 20 years already, when I was uh, head of the German Training and Standard Committee. And uh, the actual Europe European exam procedures route back to, to a paper I wrote at that time for the German Association and then IATA uh, rebelled against ITA, wanted to be something for its own, and at this point they adopted the exam procedures to have their own. Mm. And this is why. What did you call it, the Toblerone? Because of the chocolate shake? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, I will tell you the met metaphor, for, or I can first tell you the metaphor for it. Because okay. a supervisor has a, a a funny kind of job to do, but also everybody in any learning conversation, you you get offered a piece of the other person's reality, and then you taste it by t by uh, getting into uh, a conversation who is uh, in tight in the other person's reality, and then the question is, is it good, or is something not? as good as it could be, and good, there have be, might have been very different ways of being good, but still also if you accept very different flavors, at each flavor it also cannot be so good. Then you have to find out what is missing. And you ask the one who did the chocolate whether the person knows how she did this piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And if the person <coughs> also agrees that something is missing, but doesn't know uh, where this got, got lost or did not, was not filled in in the procedures, and you have the task from tasting it, getting ideas, what is wrong or what should be added, that it will become a good quality. Can I ask Peter, are you familiar with Toblerone? Yeah. Chocolate. The Swiss yes. chocolate, yeah. And there are many ribs, yeah, yeah. and you get one of yeah. this endless... Mm -hmm rips of professional cases the person is dealing with. So that's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> in classical TA training, where I was brought up with, the, the main standard was analyzing transactions. And the tape, tape and analyzing pits of the tape was an appropriate mean to analyze transactions. But the thinking about transaction is not on the tape. That's a different perspective. And if you want to help the, when you, when you taste it and say, oh, it's because a person has an immature thinking about how she's cooking chocolate, then you cannot uh, uh, find that out by tasting and tasting over again the chocolate. Then you have to talk to the person about how the person is conceptualized the process and the content of making chocolate. And this is the perspective on conceptualization. We are doing usually in exams this after listening to the tape. How would you state what you're doing here? 
how is this relating to a to ego state model to passivity or whatever and this came in more and more besides the direct anal analysis of transactions it's a analysis of conceptualizations of producing reality through transaction and as I told you <clears throat> I think um, the professional identity of a person behind <clears throat> is important to understand how sh the person is thinking and what the person is doing so questions or uh, you're working here as a adult educator and you have now this nice peak piece of guided imagery rework how would you relate this piece of work you do with your self-understanding of being an educational uh, adult educational in the field of organization <coughs> and then they should give you an idea that they, they they have a sense of a professional standpoint from which they are thinking and from which they are doing things and this for me is a part of competence as well and so this is a third perspective on pieces of chocolate of on pieces on work because this was the Toblerone model I don't know whether it was adopted I published it in, in the German TA journal but Trudy and I refer to it in the supervision <coughs> article that we did in the supervision TA journal mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure we did yeah but I in English on your website yes ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. so if, if you are trainer and supervisor I recommend you this as a tool mm. to to, con to to contract on what kind of solution mm. or what combination of perspectives of, of solution or talking about your judgment which kind of ingredients may should, should be focus of supervision I think Two, mm. there is something about um, TA as a culture tends to be an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. There is not so much that's written. Mm -hmm. And people, when we read, we maybe don't read with great precision mm -hmm. for the words. So, for example, I think of what you said just then about the analysis mm -hmm. of the conceptualization mm -hmm. of TA theory. Yeah. I think people read this as using TA to analyze. They, the the very um, the meta level you have been built in that idea yeah. that it's the analysis of the conceptualization not the yeah. TA yeah. analysis people miss yeah mm. for meta professionalism and meta, meta controlling of the association we should include that So I just give you some examples for how our understanding of competence uh, enlarged in the last 30 years. You know? 30 years ago it was, can you choose your own ego state? Can you address the other ego state properly? Is the message right? And, thing? and that was it. That's competence. But today to be a successful professional you need uh, field competence, you need competence for the market. What, what does it help when you, when you can do wonderful transactions, but you do not know how to find clients? So it's part of it. Or if you have difficulty with, fi with finding clients, then your intuition in transaction might be not free because your anxieties not to be successful will lead your intuitions and not what the client needs. We need networking competence today because we get an understanding of the whole picture without being able to draw all parts of the whole pictures ourselves. So uh, to, to work holistically, we need, net, we need to network and have a culture of economic and, prof uh, and qualified networking. And this is a total different competence than the dialogue competence with a client. It has similar elements, 
but it's something different. And I think the qualified network, <laughs> yes, the word qualified, because we tend sometimes to network with just capacity. Yeah, yeah, just somehow sit together and say, oh, I like your workshops, it's one side. And this was the, in the origins of TA, yeah? when there were 12,000 members of ITA. Yeah. It's because clients and anybody interested and practitioners and everybody. So it didn't, didn't so, feel the need to develop yes. in time. And they didn't feel like a network, so they lost it. Yeah, they felt like a big family. That was the mm -hmm. one model. Yeah. Then, as I uh, like it, I, um, to be competent uh, and in wide competence of others as well, you need to, to be competent on transparency. Mm. And still be original. Original doesn't mean to have some things that other people do not know or understand. It means to do it my way, but everybody can share it. You need to be sensitive, but at the same time you need to be robust. That's a, that's a combination a successful professional needs to be. If you are, we, we had had teachers in our programs have been very sensitive, but whenever it, it got a bit harder in the group, they collapsed internally. They have not been robust enough and they had to quit the job. Others are robust, but do not enough sensitively relate to, to group members, then they are, a, drawn into fights, and okay. this will not work either. Mm. But also, if you don't have the robustness, then it's very hard to be transparent, because to be transparent and original allows comment. Yeah, but uh, it yeah. depends on your understanding what is robust. <laughs> <laughs> robust doesn't mean to be defensive and can stand it. You, I, I feel like being robust but I'm totally transparent. Yeah, but, well, well I, I'm sort of arguing that it's very hard to be transparent mm -hmm. if you're not robust. Oh, I didn't robust. get that. <laughs> it has to yeah, do with each it other. It has to do with each other. Too. Yeah, but... Because people are afraid, the reason for not transparency is people are afraid of what somebody else will right. say or... Also have, or also have a child. wrong uh, frame of reference, what yeah. robust meet, mm -hmm. means. Yeah. So you need. These are only examples of new perspectives of of professional competency. You need a cosmopolitan attitude, and still be down to earth, mm. and find your, your your style, how you work in between these dimensions. There are some people they are, they are all over, but nowhere really, and some people they are where they are, but they get very much limited. Only to have to have the the judge tower of their own village. So, and this for me cannot be accomplished without adopting the notion of cultural competence. You have a like in your example. Uh, you have the idea how to build up a culture. You know? and for that you need a meta stance because you're always while you are. Uh, culture is built up by culture, so there's no other way to do it. The mean is culture and the goal is culture. So in order to understand your mean, whether it serves the goal, you need to have meta stances. You cannot just do it from a habitual cultural understanding. But you can do it, but then you bring up a habitual culture. And you said the meanest culture is the... The mean mm. is culture. Mean. The tool. Ah, the and the goal is culture. So it's a kind of uh, Toblerone model, but uh, away from from the question of supervision. It was... I've developed that later. No, well, not much later. It's one year later. And it's making clear in order to, to uh, come to a competent... Uh, design for working with complexity, you have to def you have to define reality on three levels in in combination and complementary to each other. You have to adopt the the, the 
level of reality, the kind of problem definitions you do. For example, if you say, oh, this is a question of the two personalities in that conflict. Then it's not important to have these two people in their organizational role. You also can some kind of work with them on the level of private personality pattern uh, encounter. If you say, and, and you can adopt procedures that make this encounter happen and make it, if possible, a learning experience. If you design the same conflict as a conflict between two departments, and they are representatives of this department, and the boss of each tells them uh, not to give up in the fight between departments, that's the other definition of the same problem, mm -hmm. then it's clear that you have to invite uh, these two in their organizational roles and think about whom else do you need on the stage. Maybe their bosses. Because otherwise you could not work on the, f the chosen focus. And isn't there an ethical question there? Yeah. That if you work at about personality and private roles. Yes. And you, it's in an organizational context and you've been invited and contracted by the organization. Yes. This is not ethical. Because you have shifted. Yeah. If you have the idea that we, if you do this, there is an automatic shift to professional roles, mm -hmm. then you might have a justification in your frame of reference that this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would not say it dogmatically it's an ethical issue, but we could question whether it is one. Yeah. We definitely know how. So my understanding is that you really have to know why you're going there mm -hmm. yes. in answer to it. Is that right? Yes, yes. yes. In this yeah. Contract. Contract. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And it's in my second way to look at this conflict of these two, so we say, okay, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a, a conflict arising in the context of two departments fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. Then we have to think about who else should be on the stage of working with. And certainly we then have to adapt procedures and models to work with this constellation we have then that fit to the roles and to our understanding of the problem. And what happens very often is um, that people define all these three edges habitually, but they do not fit to each other. So they are stating this is a problem of strategy of the company. Uh, strategy of the leader board of the company. But they have middle management people in the workshop. So for what can they do with the middle management? People workshop with this kind of definition. So they have redefined, in order that it fits together, they have to redefine it. How then can it be stated as a problem of these people when I've described up to now? And uh, also they, they think at it as a strategic problem. They invite people as into a general group, dynamic experience. <laughs> Uh, within undefined roles and they adopt uh, methods and chose roles themselves like facilitator maybe in a psychodrama. Nothing fits to each other. And so the controlling uh, triangle helps you to iterate to find one of the many uh, meaningful combinations of the definitions and sees three edges of the angle. Of the Why do you call it controlling triangle in terms of a kind of uh, checking out in this sense? Yeah, I don't, that's the problem with translation. In German it's Steuerung. It's controlling in a cybernetic model. Ah. Not taking control over, ah, but okay. uh, I don't, stirring? Is there steering. Steering. steering? Steering. Is this better? <laughs> okay, <laughs> then, it's the, then it's the steering drying. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I was told about the translator control is, yeah. is an appropriate yeah. word. Yeah. It is, but it needs extra yeah. explanation. Yes. Yes. It yes. leads to different associations. Yeah. It has a connotation yes. of right, taking right. over. Okay. Steering. I mean steering, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Often when um, there is translation from German yes. about controlling parent ego states, yeah. it translates as orienting. Yeah, is this yeah, similar? Yeah. Orienting? Yeah, but this is not meant here. Orienting and steering is similar yeah. in English? No. No, so it's different. No, steering is different. It's just to, to find out Direct. how we how we can run the system and how we can put things together that it makes sense and, and together they work. Yeah, it has to do with the idea of orienting. It has to do with the idea of orienting in, in the sense of giving direction. Yeah. But it, it's it's more of a sense. Yeah, but, in but the sense it, you of can use it in that sense, yeah. but it, you can also use it in the sense finding your your point. Your standpoint, without giving something to others, to organize yourself. Steering has a problem too. The driver yes, of the car driving, yeah, steers. Yeah. yeah. The car. It's we didn't find a, a really good translation. Yeah. But you're we talking about bringing bits together. Yes. So this is synthesizing. Yeah, synthesizing is wonderful, but but it doesn't have the elements that I'm synthesizing in order to. Uh, 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 to take care of a process, to do something with it. It's like a compass, isn't it? Finding a direction. Okay. We should, uh, we if you ever come up with a proper end work, end please end let end me end know. End <laughs> but we are clear we now. know what you mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we are clear now what, what, it, what it can mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we do not define it, but we accept that we understood the meaning. Mm. So find the cultural one is so I I already mentioned it that you can also uh, transfer uh, this stirring ideas to how to understand team coaching, for example, and uh, how to define complementary. Uh, parts of the reality when doing teamwork. So I already told you that my understanding of team is those who have shared responsibility. Mm. And this is not in general. Uh, this has to do with the actual question. So for example, if there is a problem, how do we deal with software? Then we can have who is important uh, who has an important responsibility on how we do with software. And then CSR, the people who have implemented it in this department. There is a boss who wanted to have the one or, or the other feature. There is a serving company or the serving part. So this kind of team is very different as if you ask, um, uh, do we, do we have a, problem with injustice of salary order. Mm. If this is your question, you respond to responsibility, mm. then you think of different people who should be now the team, the community mm. that shares responsibility on that. So that's a new way of definition of, mm. a resp uh, of team <coughs> that is not habitual in the one or the other kind. And would uh, who who see who makes this definition? You know, if you may think I have partial responsibility, and that's, I don't. That's a good question. Or the other way around. So, if somebody of the company comes to you and says, "I want to have team coaching," this is a, a trademark. Everybody thinks they know what they want to buy. Also, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrote that on the list of your services. Also, you don't know what that could mean. Mm. And then you start. Think about it. is this person inviting me into a team uh, question? That is this the right person to talk about these responsibilities? Does this person have access to these people who are important to deal with the responsibilities that the person thinks uh, it's needed to be dealt with? And all, all these questions, the iterations between all these questions starts. And yeah. there's not one solution to it, but yeah. this is a language that you can ask the proper questions. 
I came into your organisation and did a piece of work about teams with this idea yeah. of a team, what makes a team different from a group is a shared responsibility. Yeah. And the trash of people in the hierarchy who came to this piece yeah. realised that they're not a team. Mm. They're a bunch of people who have the same manager. Yeah. But they're not a team. They're on the organisation. Right. Yeah. 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 Because they don't have a shared responsibility yeah. for getting anything done. Yeah. So, the logic you know already from the stirring triangle, it's now the stirring triangle for teamwork. So, in combination, you have to define what is the task of the team, what is the responsibility of the team you want to focus in what you will do. And if you know this, then you can say who should be involved in, and in which roles. For example, you need um, someone of the department who produced that software not in his uh, organizational role, but in his professional role as an IT designer. We know we need some someone who knows why they have constructed it the way they did. <coughs> if we are more, if we have more the question of uh, uh, why did it fail to adopt it in our culture, it is because there was not a, a power structure that really wanted to have it. Then you may need the same person who uh, is. At the same time, uh, the head of the IT development department, but in his organizational role, not in his professional role. And certainly, you have to adopt an, an appropriate approach to go for this focus and to work with the people that should be involved then. What do you mean with the self concept of coach, yeah. coaching approach, self concept? Yeah, how do I understand my own role in the process? Okay. It's a difference whether I'm a consultant that should know about the content of what should wants to be accomplished, mm -hmm. or whether I am just a communication moderator. But if I'm only a communication moderator, I should not give diagnosis on the culture. I only give diagnosis whether they communicate proper or not. Then it fits together. So this bottom one is about the coach, not yeah. about the team. Right. And the procedures the coach just brings in and, and adopts. And what I've not here, but this, I've also written that this is vertical, uh, vertical team development. Uh, by this, you can work with team development methods. Also, you have a big organization because if you define the issue, you think about where does it go well, where does it go bad, who do I need to include, and then. Also, there have been possible 300 people to be included. You cannot do teamwork with them. You select representatives of roles, of questions, and bring them together, and then you can work them uh, like a constellation work as representatives of this kind of roles, questions in the team, and you can do teamwork. But for that, certainly you have to do uh, a contract, many contract talks with the people that they identify what the question is. So you do a lot of organizational development also within the contracting, already in the, within the contracting. And this means if you come from a classical self-definition as a transactional analyst, it's important that you find new self-definitions beyond using the models and concepts of conventional TA. Mm. <coughs> so if somebody says, I'm always working with constellations, or I'm always working with one-to-one, -one, 
uh, racketeering and analysis, since a person is stuck to a conventional self-understanding. That might be appropriate, but it, it passes the responsibility uh, of judging whether this fits the needs of the organization or not to the organization, because they do not know they only have to offer one service. I think they should know, and they should be prudent on that and make it easier for the customer. So, if you have a self-definition that is not bound to mo specific models, procedures, or what else, that gives you freedom to discuss and reformulate models from new perspectives with new upcoming theories and new situations, new problems, typical problems in organizations. And ideally, you are a toolmaker. And at each moment, you are, you should not, but you are able to make a new tool. Certainly, if possible, we have a a standard set of tools that everybody can understand easily how they work. But if they don't fit, then you have to make so change them and make a new ones or new combinations one. And you can only do this if you have meta stands to it. So and this is why in nineteen eighty eight I already uh, said in my acceptance speech uh, um, the question what is a network of TA identity? It's not only one way I find an identity. And I suggested by then it's analysis by transactions not of transactions. Mm -hmm. And it's developing models to describe how reality is created by transactions. It's cons consciousness for the context. So, meta stance is part of our identity. We understand TA as a cybernetic model, as Byrne started with, but he referred to Wiener, and, but cybernetics have been very te <coughs> technical at that time. Today, we would describe that differently. But this means uh, also different possible uh, perspectives I have um, already told you when we talked about perspe uh, systemic approach, what, what is in the container, which kind of perspectives. And specifically to be a TA work, be an experimental approach mm -hmm. invites me not to justify everything I do on the background of classical concepts. But just do something and find ways to explain it fine. And uh, using, for example, the meta framework of stirring triangle, um, choosing models from TA, from other schools, <coughs> or changing them or making my own. And I'm still a transactional analyst if there's no circles and no arrows. But this is a it's not easy for many people to understand because it's not. Uh, it's it's a Moses. Yeah, I told you about my myths. It's understanding spirituality, and it's not a building a, a golden calf. Do you say calf? Yes, with the Lord, yes. Yeah, and says this is what we pray for <coughs> now. And Moses was very angry when he <laughs> when he came back. He was too angry, I think. Um, because he was, people have been in the desert, they left Egypt where it went quite good business, and they followed him, not knowing whether they will go get anywhere and how to sell what, what he wants to show them someday. There was a vision of the land of milk and honey, but you didn't, you don't know. He, he keeps them in good mood by doing some miracles <laughs> with water and so, but it was not enough. And he was away on a mountain for <coughs> more than 10 days. And they have been lost and scared. So they needed something to pray to and to understand this. There must be a God somewhere and we take a picture for it. The problem is that it, after some time they take the picture for what they wanted to look for. Mm. And 
There is a brother of Moses named Aaron who told him, <coughs> you're too strict with him. People need something as a bridge to spirituality. And he has is right too. This is why we also make didactic models. But we do not pray to them. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny, I'm laughing a lot because I use this metaphor exactly, you know, Moses that goes away and breaks when he comes back very upset <laughs> and says, what are you doing? Yeah, I tried, but PTA people didn't like it. They wanted to send me to back to psychotherapy again. <laughs> <laughs> And so I think uh, TA is also a question of culture of the professional community. As I told you, to be a professional this is also tied to the community and the context mm -hmm. that supports you and you feel at home. And if this is very traditional, it's hard to be an in innovative part of the tribe. So you had this vision 23 years ago. Yes. How is it now? What do you see now as you look at this? Oh, it's exactly how my elder brother, who is more 73 now, told me one day. He it's said, exactly like what? My elder brother. He said, look, I had so many ideas, he was in the engineering business, what should be new. And I was so impatient. But when I look back to my life, Life, everything somehow has been achieved what I suggested, but 25 years later. Mm. So we have two more years to go. <laughs> <laughs> so as, if you are Moses, you have to be prepared that the desert is very long. <laughs> so it's important that you also find a style to have a good time as long as you are on your way. <laughs> Otherwise, you get too, too bitter. Yeah. And I, I managed to do so. So I, I don't know, I'm no longer so harsh on people who do not want to follow and understand. This is a picture uh, I used to convince people to invest into culture. I show them this and say, see, that's the same amount of time. And you usually, the more important your question is, the more you feel like you don't have, have time to build up culture, you should immediately go for results. If you start with a big result orientation, from the beginning on you will have cultural problems. And they will increase, and after a certain amount of time, you will have, let's say, 80% cultural problems and 20% content results. If you start also, <laughs> the goal is results, with building up culture, then in the beginning it looks like, you should do this with examples of goal orientation, not just something, mm. that because of the specific learning we are already have talked to, talked about. But you should proceed to, uh, you should use examples of task, work, but using the way you deal with tasks to build up culture. And the more you have a conjoint reality and conjoint culture, and culture means that everybody intuitively and purposely activates the sides of the other person and of the other role to contribute to the results. And Simosis works fine, you can do more content work. But the first uh, um, criterion for quality is are we on the way building up the culture we need later to be able to deal with the contents. And you see, after the same time, you have, let's say, 60% six, uh, results around the task. and maybe 30% of attention you need to maintain culture. What do you mean by cultural measures? Is cultural measures on the right? Oh. <coughs> oh, do you mean items? Yeah. 
defining what your what how you want your culture to yeah, be, what I, it looks like, and being able to measure that. I forgot. I forgot. I didn't translate it. I forgot what it meant. It means building up culture. Mm. What would it look like to and have so, a really good culture? Yeah, and, and, so, you, and the more it works, uh, the more you do have to use attention for maintaining it. For example, if we introduce uh, time discipline, focus discipline, and role discipline in subgroups. In the beginning, we do small pieces of work, and people learn to uh, complementary be disciplined on these things. And the more it's going to be automatically stirred, the more they have time, they have space to do more complicated task work. Mm. That's an example for that. Mm. And if you start because the task is so interesting and so complicated, without building up that culture, then you will more and more end up with having cultural problems and not enough attention to do the mm. task works. And managers buy that. They immediately understand because everybody knows. And if you combine that with a cultural encounter model and tell them, See, you maybe think within the technical model of communication, then you will not see the need for building up shared reality and, sh and culture that you can manage shared reality on an intuitive level as well. Uh, and if you, and then they understand that it's worthwhile to invest, also, it's very important. The task is what they want. They, do, they are not in the first line interested in, in culture, usually. But after a while, they understand. Mm. But what, yeah, the professional is saying that their most efficient way to deal with the right. task yeah. is it's not with the not because you should be a cultural yeah, because organization. It's yeah. because you, you want to survive in yeah. performance, right? Mm -hmm. And be, because... The people who have to perform are cultural beings, and when they have to work together, it's a question of culture. So this is why you need culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is <laughs> a picture from Günter Moore, I like. Uh, somehow... You could look at what the A associations try to do, although they have on board wheels that look some kind of better. I put this on the front of the annual report last year for the ITAA oh. on the cover. And reactions? Fun. They didn't they find fun? Can I, yeah. Did you get any comments? <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. Yes. I was going to ask the same question. What was the comment? Yeah. Huh? It's like, if that doesn't communicate, what will? <laughs> <laughs> so I go quickly through that. I will now um, just uh, point to some of the principles I understand are really valuables of TA tradition, and uh, and which I want to keep also maybe in a transformed way. And then I will add some we have to integrate uh, in order to meet the challenges of the 21st century. So, what I always liked, and I said in the beginning of these three days, the Burns idea to focus on real people and real life situations. And the role model is saying, life is real life, meaning playing roles in the place. There is no other. And Burn was interested how people create reality, by transactions. That's a basic approach. I don't know whether he would have called himself a constructivist, mm -hmm. but it was implied. And his wellness have been create realities in which communication and encounter is possible, works, is satisfying, and is creative. So... And every company needs all these three dimensions as well. And he said you only can build that up if you acknowledge for and understand background levels. Because whether it works or not, 
is not defined only by the foreground level. So that he defines sees in a specific way is a different thing, but the basic approach is is that, and I just agree to it. Is that the picture of the boy behind the lawyer? Is this what we? Think? Yeah, for example, or the group imago behind the self positioning within a group, mm -hmm. so that you have directly see on the surface of the stage something, but how it works and how you understand it has to do with backgrounds. And if it do, the play doesn't go on as how you expect it, it might have to do with movements in the backgrounds yeah. that you did not take into account. But this uh, nowadays this is not a, a mistake, it is just natural when we're working with complexity, we, we never can fully define what is in the background. And for a long time, the background is just intuitively or uh, um, supporting what you're playing in the, in the foreground, and then the background is changing, no longer supporting what you're doing in the foreground, and the foreground will change and you do not understand why. And that's so often yeah. the issues that organizations yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, a principle is, in, in classical theories, you nourish the necess necessary function of intuition in creating reality, because it's not a thing you can do with your forehead. Too many levels to mention. You need intuition, you can drain your intuition, and you can drain parts of it, but Altogether, we function 80-90% on a in, ho hopefully educated intuitional basis. And certainly acting from a position of okay and okay and caring love. That's a humanistic value perspective. And you know, in every conversation I got the feedback, I feel felt respected. Yeah, mm. So that's okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and part of it is an encounter on an equal eye level, respecting the other's reality. What Bern really did for example, in social psychiatry movement things, is respecting that other people with other processes have their reality and their importance too, and we can use transactional an analysis to understand each other's reality. <clears throat> and from the, with the attitude of taking each other's autonomy and wisdom serious, for example, by using the contractual method. But as if, if we had here, contractual method does not mean fixing a contract in the beginning. It's a principle more that is coming from an attitude than it is a specific method or kind way of doing it. And as we talked about the question of desperation, uh, a main issue for Byrne was meaning of life and how to help people to relate to meaning in life. And TA concepts now may be stressed more by Shishifs, for example, uh, is taking responsibility in relationships and taught society. Also Mary Goulding, for example, always dealt with political questions. She didn't accept that we only do play psychotherapy in a small greenhouse and do not care about the rest. And also the intent to develop concepts and procedures and can be understood and related to by everybody involved. Not not to produce procedures and knowledge that brings in uh, up one up one 
down relationship. And I talked about this also when I talked about the economy of models. So, he wanted to keep concepts as simple as possible, but profound on a deeper level. This is an attitude that you want to keep things simple, but not uh, yeah, not, not superficial, uh, so that you can start from the beginning to work with it. And the more you learn, the more you understand more levels of the same concept, and the concept should allow that. I formulate as simple as possible. It came out somehow of that if a, if a concept could not be understood by an eight-year-old, it's not he. How, sh how should I explain um, responsibility for the structural aspects of organizations to an eight-year-old? Mm -hmm. so, so if you make a, a frozen principle of it, it's just nonsense. If you make a flexible principle of it, if you can make it sim simpler and it's still the same thing, certainly do it. <laughs> The tabloid newspapers in this country use the same age level for their, yeah. you know, <laughs> for their written work, if an eight-year-old can understand it. I'm assuming the eight-year-old can read. Yeah. Assuming the eight-year-old can read. Yeah. And maybe I take that out, but I, I, or put that in. Uh, a TA principle is achieving professionalism through transactional competence. When do you know that you are competent? Then the answer is, when I know to, <coughs> to transact, I would state it to create reality through common communication in a competent way. And this means building up non-abusive, non-exploitive relationships. And this means enlarge on organizations, building up pluralistic and non-imperialistic associations. So, a lot uh, to keep. It's worth to keep. And now some things I would like to enlarge. What we already did this three days is including organizational contexts into the model of personality, relationships and organizations not to stick so, to the habitual personality concepts. And focusing on organizational structures as processes and processes as well as focusing on individuals and their relationships and how it goes together. And heading for an orientation towards co-creativity resources, solutions and meanings. This is a repetition of all we did these three days. So I can go more quickly through that. Including consequences for people and processes must not be present in the situation. You remember Graham Barnes' uh, statement, it's only t classical TA, only is good for working between two people or some, but very personal, it deletes content and context. We need to have to include that. Content, uh, to, to think about consequences for people who are not here. We talked about this when we talked about symbiosis. If you buy your handy here, it has a relation to children doing mining in Africa. Whether it's, but you cannot find that when you analyze yourself. You have to have knowledge about relationships in society and economy. Otherwise you could not work with it. To take over responsibility, you have to learn to put questions that are not only privately motivated. So it's a, yeah. it's a system of education.
And this certainly includes uh, other background levels, for example, financial benefits or market strategies or whatever, <coughs> besides psychological backgrounds. And psychological means beside experiences and organizational of individual behavior understood uh, from the background of personal life history. It includes shaping approaches to fit interplay and integration with other professions and perspectives in organization. You remember that I said that you can describe organizations as a, a system of cultural meeting of professions. If you understand it like this, and if this meeting somehow doesn't work very fine, then your concept somehow should account for that. Or if you don't have already concepts for that, made one, make one. It means developing approach. This is all in the TA article. Uh, I think that from the TA article in in the, uh, the first volume in ninety in two thousand eight as a uh, as a reaction to the award. It means developing approaches integrating different scientific disciplines not only as additional specialities I'm a GA person, I'm also doing body work or I'm also doing financial analysis this is uh, the mentality of adding things so you have a building that is old and doesn't fit to the times now then so you build something on that time everybody Adds some kind of building, and after some, after one, it's it's a bundle of strange buildings. <laughs> Speaking in that metaphor, my suggestion is put everything down, keep the elements that are wonderful, and build it, building it anew with a new logic. That needs a new architect. Everyone's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Yeah. So, B E R three. Uh, yes, sir. How do you say? Letters. Three, three letters. We have in common. Yeah. <laughs> four. Oh, four. Yeah. yeah. Right. Four is the whole yes. number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Holistic number. <laughs> and this is important to. Uh, to uh, to, uh, for the attitudes, how we deal with each other in, a, in an association that is understood as a as a network of <coughs> different professions. What the TA is, it's not organized on professions integrating all kind of schools with that profession. Up to now, it's under it's organized, uh, yeah, to traditions, but also to possible futures integrating many professions and for that we need really to take in account that for example an adult educator is not a small psychotherapist who just knows a little about people not really but for teachers it's enough but that this is a really important profession and this person has quite this profession has, has criteria to be successful that I could not fulfill. So we need to, to work together and not, so yeah, my smaller brother will stay there all the time. And there's a big discussion in many um, associations in which clinical and, and educational people adopt orga the organizational perspective and also because there's a lot of money in that market. Uh, they do not really respect that you need different professions to do good work in the organizational field. They just tried to do TA in. It's like within mm -hmm. TA, the TSTA process. Mm -hmm. We do not respect educators mm -hmm. in TA. Yeah. So there is no training, there is no development, there's no structures. Mm -hmm. 
to become a TSTA. You just take some time, have some supervision, and you become a TSTA. Yeah. Different in Brazil. They have a different process. Oh, good. Of training okay. TSTAs in training and supervision. Yeah. And this means, for example, if you train transaction analysts in the organization field, it's not okay to train them within the clinical tradition because certainly they learn the procedures of training and and transfer them to their work in organization. You should be able to to uh, to transport the same essence, but in concepts and procedures uh, that are appropriate to the field of application. And this says developing work to be done. And if you don't know that these are clinical procedures, also clinical training procedures, then you can you cannot do that. And if you do not understand really the organizational field, then you cannot do it either. So we need an openness to declare a variety of approaches, concepts and methods according to the developmental needs of various professional fields as of TA. Developing a declared TA identity that takes a meta stance to classical concepts and to developing professionalism in various fields and meeting emerging new challenges. What I said about the identity profile. Oh. <laughs> this, this is a, what's the award? I, I don't know why. I put this slide up there. So I thank you for your patience. This was a going through again, and it's it's more of declaration. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's important. Uh, to tell my colleagues in TA, it's not that I discount our history, and I, I describe what is so, what makes it so worthwhile that I'm still a TA. Also, I'm a, a very successful member of systemic associations. I'm an honorary member of this association. I am president of coaching association. Why should I stick to TA? Because I'm thankful. Uh, to the roots and to the traditions being coming from, and they're still worthwhile enough to develop it further. I don't know whether we will manage to do that in the framework work of the organizations we have developed up to now. Maybe it's too complicated because they are democratic associations, uh, and as long as the majority is not understanding really organizational field, it's difficult to get them to decide that this has really professionalism on its own. And certainly there's a lot of money in that field. Why should you vote for saying I'm not competent to work there? Mm. So you hold a vision of potential for TA theory development, for the development of theory of practice and of tools for practice. Right. And that's the piece to keep the focus on. Yes. And we heritaged, is that right, the right word? Inherited. Inherited. We inherited all these things anyway. So it must yes. not be called TA if, if, if this is not the right word to sell it, uh, to address it. So, even if the organization dies, the heritage of TAs will not die, but it may survive in different form, <coughs> in other forms that as, as, we, as we know now. We have to consider how much we want to put energy in revitalizing the old structures or accepting that they had their time and it's easier to build new structures. Mm -hmm. Co-create, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I hear you say something about um, t TA's willingness to acknowledge different areas of competence or different contexts, that they are truly different professional areas. 
it's a kind of like the organizational area versus the is that right? Am I understanding that right? I don't know because I didn't understand. <laughs> I don't understand so you don't understand. Do you, are you saying that um, does the TA world um, acknowledge that um, using, you know, being a TA profession, person in an organisational field is a different professional set of competences than being a TA person in psychotherapy. Yes. Yeah. True. And it doesn't like to acknowledge this as different. So any any people, I'm trying to understand what the problem is in the structures now. Is that? I I have <laughs> I was thinking about what you're saying and what you're saying etc. And um, um, if if I may, may I share my thinking? Yes, certainly. Room? Yes, I I was I'm in the process of thinking actually, so I'm sort of thinking aloud. Yes, I certainly. Have sort certainly. Of completed my thinking in a way. I um, one of the things that strikes me in what you've been saying and what Rosemary has been saying at different times and mm. the people I know also from. Uh, Germany, who have left the association, mm -hmm. the International PA Association, um, so so seems to indicate to me um, mm -hmm. a very rigid association, in a way, international association, mm -hmm. maybe, that doesn't take into account uh, or does not uh, consider or include anything that is, in a way, out of the mainstream of what has been the past. In this mm. sense, the analogy of Moses, etc., mm. that you're using before. So I was thinking about what you're saying before in terms of what what, what Randa commented. Yeah. Uh, it is as if there were still a culture of psychotherapy, mm -hmm. the old way that leaks in, yes. contaminates all the other fields, mm. which are sort of, uh, uh, I don't know how to say, the, the um, bastardy, the bastards. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Not the uh, respected brothers. <laughs> and yeah. they, were, they were kicked out y yeah. since, since decades. Mm -hmm. Like okay. Rambards and others. And this. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not saying this is a fault of individuals. So I say it's yeah. motivation no, no, behind it. it. It's, it's yeah. like with the monkeys. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the kind of system that is yes. working in this way. Yes. Expelling sorts of everything that is not. Yeah. Uh, or making uh, it too difficult for those who want to change it uh, to be successful enough mm -hmm. that they uh, are ready to spend their energy mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. And is holding a vision for potential yeah. for the future. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the piece that's really important. And yeah. it is mm -hmm. Yeah. It may be different. If TA is creating realities by communication, then it's TA. <laughs> if it TA is something else, then it's not TA. Yeah. But that's such a great... Creating reality, so it's creating it through communication. Because you can fit lots of different um, groups into that, can't you? Yes, that's true. I mean, that we have a problem. Yeah, we, we, I feel like... Right. And we have really a problem on that because also in the field of other professions, old definitions of what a profession is <laughs> uh, shift. <Yes. laughs> and we get we get overlaps like in the media. Mm -hmm. In early times you have known what a TV is, what a, a telephone is. And it was very clear now every every <laughs> machine can do some kind yeah. of everything mm -hmm. and it's in, in it's moving uh, and I would prefer to have it clearer but that's not where we are <laughs> we have somehow to learn to to swim also we do not know how deep the water is so it's interesting, because yeah. to swim it doesn't matter how deep, um, as long right. as it's deep enough. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as, yeah, right. Deep enough. Yeah. And as long as you do not define, you only can swim when you know what's beneath you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Underneath you. Yeah. Yeah. But you only can swim when you know? I didn't hear what you said. 
Uh, you mean that you only can swim when you know? When you know what's yeah. beneath you. Ah, what's beneath you. Ah, okay. Yeah, if you think that, then it's difficult to learn to swim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you have to define it. this is the ground I'm swimming on mm -hmm. in order to hypnotize mm -hmm. yourself to be competent. Mm -hmm. And temperature makes a difference. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we could play around. Yeah. So, uh, with this, I, I came to an end with my mm. presentations.